Thanks for coming to snowpilot.org. I'm going to walk you through creating a snow pit. Um, on the main menu here, uh, we can see, we can look at other people's pits um, that they've entered in before. And on the far left, we have a getting started tab, which is sort of a cheat sheet. So if you're ever making a pit and you get lost, you're not sure how to do something, this is a good spot to come and look. In order to create snow pits, we need to sign up. So we'll sign up here. Asking for some basic information. Click if you're a professional or not. Give ourselves a username. And a password. And then we click create new account. This will then automatically take us to the preferences, unit preferences page, where we have to fill out how we want our pits to be made. So we've got our, our, our name, phone number. We want to check a uh, our default region. Um, I'm in Montana, so I'll click that. Um, if I'm predominantly working in one mountain range, I'll click that. Um, in my case, I'll leave that blank. You can add new mountain ranges here um, if they're not already listed. And then I'm going to choose an organization. Um, I can also choose uh, individual if, it's, if I'm not affiliated with anything. Um, here I'm an avalanche center. And then I will choose my avalanche center here. You can also create a new one. So if you have a guide service or um, your own group, you can create your own uh, organization and subgroup. Um, I'll click that. And then we just want to fill out the preferences for however you like making your pits. So I like zero at the bottom. These centimeters. This is where we can also change our password if we need to. Uh, and then don't forget to set the time zone. And if you'd like to upload a picture of yourself, you can do that here, although we really don't care what you look like. And then click Save. Now we're ready to make a snow pit. We can see in the upper right, we're logged in. We're ready to roll. So I click Create Snow Pick. It takes us to the first page you can look up here we have five tabs the first one is the core info so we'll give this a, a name it's, since this is a practice pit I'm gonna leave this clicked this is just saying that this pit isn't real that I'm just messing around checking it out um, if you're once you're doing real pits make sure this is unchecked you can set the date and the time also in the visibility here, uh, this is where you set your preferences for who can look at your pit. It can be anyone that comes to the Snowpilot website, which would be publicly visible. If you just want people in your group to look at it, um, you can click that, or you can also make it so only you can see it. Um, regardless, all the pits go to the uh, database uh, for researchers to use. So we just scroll down, just start filling in. Um, all the key information here on the map uh, since we chose Montana as our default area it comes up uh, right here I can scroll down I can choose my exact location where I dug my pit and it'll populate the lat long there if I didn't have a GPS unit with me and then I'll fill out the rest basic weather over here fill out stability on similar slopes um, we're using the swag and ogre definitions for that um, you can click what boxes are appropriate you can write some test notes and then we're ready to start adding layers so up here we'd click on the layers tab 
and we'll see these two square boxes. The upper square box allows us to click and drag the, uh, the hardness and the bottom square allows us to set the depth and the little circle here is if we have multiple hardnesses we can set that as well. We can also set set them over here by using our keyboard. Let's keep that at, uh, we'll say that was 70. Um, we have multiple hardnesses here. And then we'll just add our layers. Uh, we can So add it. You can use multiple grain size. And in this case, that's going to be my layer of greatest concern. Let's say it was the top part of that layer. And once I'm done adding the hardnesses and all the information on the layers, I'll move over to stability tests. I get a drop down menu here of all the standard tests. So I'll add a few of those. If I have some uh, temperatures, I'll add that. Now when I, when I add the temperatures, they're not going to populate this graph here, but they will populate our main graph. And then if we did take some densities, we could add those. Um, you could either add that on the layer page or you can add it here on the density page. And when we're done adding all our stuff, we'll go up here and hit uh, Save Snow Pit and Preview. There's also the button down on the lower left. And so this will give us a picture of what our pit looks like. And so we'll give it a once over, make sure we like it. If we don't, we can click Edit and go back and edit more of it. Um, but when we're ready, we hit Save, Lock, and Download. And what that's going to do is that's going to save the snow pit, it's going to put it in the database, it's going to lock it so we can't edit it anymore, and then it's going to download um, a picture to our, our, our desktop. So here I get to choose how I want to export that data. If I want it as a JPEG, a PNG, XML, or CAMEL, I'll just export that as a, as a JPEG. There it is. Um, and now it's in the database. So if I go back to the home page, I can see here I am. This is the pit I just created. Since I chose it to be publicly viewable, everyone can look at it. Also, on the, 
the page um, once I'm logged in I can click here and just go okay give me all the pits from my group which in this case is the the Gallant National Forest Avalanche Center and then I can look and see what myself my coworkers, or people that are in that group all the pits they they put in I can also filter them by mountain range um, by uh, by area um, if the snow pits are, are searchable um, then you can look around the country or the world to see what people have been have been putting in. Um, we can see here on the home page we have the recent snow pits and if we scroll down we have our snow pits. Um, so since I only I just created one here, um, another thing to realize is that if you scroll down we also get the map um, of where the where the pit was dug. So there you have it. Practice. Um, if you have any problems, send us an email, and, uh, but we're really excited that people are using this, and thanks a ton.